district in the way that you have the house in two halves, and these few apartments in one district, those few in the middle district, you define these candidates or these voters as groups, and you basically can't cut this between the two. You have to, if you move one guy into another district, you have to move one guy as two in this district. And now we have more natural models, but uh, still there's what to do. As you can imagine, if you use these options I just listed, it's a little bit different kinds of, of control problems. You can define the constructive and disruptive control version. So basically, you want to make someone win the campaign. The disruptive version, you want someone not to win the election. You end up at the end with 22 different types of control actions. And for years, there was a run on finding a voting rule with as many and the hardest results, resistances as possible. My PhD advisor, your daughter, was really to get Trump, so I had to do it that time. Um, and the best we could find was water coating, buffet coating, and SPAD, which is six inches of different state and dual coating. These are not all the not so really natural coating rules, except of water uh, coating, buffet coating. Um, but they have up to 20 uh, MP hardness results and only two vulnerabilities, which is okay. So, until now, we assume that we have full information the manipulator, the driver, the chair, they know everything. They know the voting we used, they know the set of candidates, they know the set of voters, they know each voter's uh, preferences. Is this really realistic? In real world, you may have some kind of intuition, maybe some knowledge, but, but you also have some, some uh, guess, so you don't know what exactly the votes are from, from these voters. Um, you really have to look at partial information. This is one point, which is very important. The second point, part of the restrictions. Um, over 15 or 20 years, most of the UCOPs of papers assumed that basically Every election, every vote can appeal. Even if it's a kind of unrealistic, weird vote, it can appeal. Um, in, real, in reality, it's not really the case. There are several examples and, and papers showing that uh, in many times, in many cases, um, real world elections offer you some kind of structure. This could be single people profile, single people profile, single person profile. So the idea here is, until now, each admissible vote was allowed, um, but what if the diversity of votes is limited and the resulting profiles offer some kind of structure? So what I just mentioned a minute ago. What kind of advantages can we get here? First of all, we can end up with better properties for these restricted domains. What the properties let me show you on the next slide. Um, we can rule out unnatural cases and structure can help us designing better algorithms. Here's an example, single thing is. So for example, we are in the room um, and we have to somehow agree on a temperature to like set the thermostat. I'm sorry, I have to uh, Celsius degrees So, for example, my preference is I'm talking here, I'm moving a little bit, I'm sweating a little bit. For me, it's better if it's a bit colder than warmer, so I prefer, prefer 18 degrees to 16 degrees, then 22 degrees, then minus 10 degrees because I have a nice warm jacket, I can put it on, and I don't want to have 42 degrees because anything I do, 42 degrees is simply too hot for me, I don't want to talk in 42 degrees Celsius. Now, as you can see, if I have an access, over the candidates. This is simply ranking them from the lowest temperature to the highest temperature. My preference profile can be drawn here, my preference can be drawn here as a single peak. Something because I have only one peak. Now, if you have a second candidate, a second voter um, whose preferences are 22 degrees for my 
minus 10 degrees, then plus 18, 16, and 42. It clearly has two peaks. This fold is not simply according to this axis, this ordering of the And this is exactly the definition. Um, if they are given an axis A, this was the uh, temperature uh, on the axis a minute ago. Um, this is total level candidates. And furthermore, we have the volts. The top and candidate C. We say that this volt is single peaked with respect to the axis A. If for any two candidates, X and Y, if Y is between X and C on the axis, then Y has to be also between X and C in the volt. This is the preference profile, so the set of all volts. <coughs> Is single peak with respect to axis A if each one is single peak with respect to A. And the preference profile B is said to be single peak consistent if there exists an axis A such that P is single peak with respect to A. Now, this is a good thing, single peakness, because first of all, it can be decided in linear time uh, if a profile is single peak or not. Second, Given settlement theorem, which I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, that basically every voting rule is many clever, does not hold for single peak profiles. On the other hand, complexity often decreases. For example, um, there are many relation and writing problems which are empty and hard to general case, but if I limit myself to single peak profiles, suddenly many good dimensions become. But the biggest problem is, single thickness is not robust. What does that mean? Here's an example. We have an axis A, B, C, D. These are my candidates. And we have 100 voters who rank A on the top position, B on the second, C on the third, D on the fourth, and E on the fifth one. We have 100 votes ranking E, B, C, D, A. We are still single peak, right? We only have one B. We again have 100 votes ranking C, B, D, A, E. Still single peak. We have 300 votes, still single peak profile. And then comes one guy that votes like this A, E, B, D, C. It's really not single peak. We have 301 voters, and only one guy votes in a way that is not single peak, and our structure is destroyed. The fact is that um, several researchers have looked at real-world data. They haven't found any real-world data sets where they had single peak uh, structures. There was always at least one vote or several votes with joint single peak. It's a big problem uh, because you always have some kind of noise in the preference to real-world settings. There's a solution for that, the so-called real single peak. Profiles, which is much more robust compared to single peakness, and uh, we can still work pretty good with them, and we still uh, partially fulfill high properties. So, in our previous paper, we got this part of Martin Lackner, we have identified seven such nearly single peak notions. Um, Notions 1 and 6 were introduced by Polyshevsky and Maspanda and Maspanda. Notions 2 and 3 were suggested by Eskov and Elijah Lester, but they have to work with them. And the rest, the other three, uh, are due to us. That explains how this works. So, the first case we have K memory single peak profiles. Uh, this means that we have a huge profile, we have voters, and we allow K voters somehow mess up with a single peak structure. So if we integrate these K voters, these K metrics, then the resulting connection is single peak. K additional axis single peakness, uh, in this case, we don't want our structure to be single peak peak according to one axis, but to K plus one axis. So we can have K different axis, and each of the votes is single peak according to one of these axis. 
key candidate relation, it's similar to the k-metric, uh, similar to the ocean. In this case, we are not deleting k candidates, but they are removing k features, but we are removing k candidates, and the resulting direction should be single peak. k local candidate deletion is um, we are removing k candidates out of each code, the resulting partial profile should be single peak. K global swaps, we are allowed to swap K times in our whole election, uh, neighboring candidates in order to get uh, with a single peak profile. Local swaps are the same as global swaps says in this case we are allowed to swap K times in each vote. And K candidate partition single peak this means that we partition the set of candidates into K subpartitions, and in each of the subpartitions we have a single peak profile. First of all, um, Single peak consistency, so the question whether the profile is K memory, K additional access, and so on, single peak consistent, jumps from linear time to every completeness. The only case where we still have the good running time is K candidate deletion, and K candidate punch is still open. We don't know yet what the result is there. On the other hand, verify. If for a given axis, uh, the profile is key memory, key addition axis, and so on, single peak is still solvable in project. Now, here comes the nice result. Uh, and this is the one we presented last year's ADT conference here in Lexington. Is the complexity of constructive coalitional weighted manipulation. Veto elections, veto elections here are elections voting group where each voter gives one point to each of the candidates and zero point to his this paper candidates, so this is these voting vetoing uh, campaign. Now in the general case, this problem is empty complete, and under the perfect assumption of single peak profiles, this problem is easy to solve. We could show, according to our distance measures to single peakedness, where exactly the line is between easy problems and empty problems. So basically a clear line, um, how far we can go from a perfectly single peak profile in order to still be uh, in a polynomial time result, and how far we have to move in order to get into the empty uh, hard problem. So, um, I was talking here about the complexity of my field actions. We were always establishing P of MP hardness results. I already mentioned that MP hardness is first case complexity. So, even if I show MP hardness, it doesn't mean that in the general case, if uh, I have global elections, people by people, or so which is whatever, we really Study and then the others may be able to solve the problems uh, still in point of their time. So that's why the next step uh, in the research should be checking all these empty hardness results um, with approximation algorithms, with atoms that are always efficient, all of them is correct, atoms that are always correct, all is efficient. You can use average case complexity to check how the complexity changes on the average. You can also use parameterized complexity where you fix some kind of parameter. And in this case, maybe you can uh, eliminate uh, the exponential growth um, in some issues. So basically, these are all points uh, you should look at. And also, uh, the data analysis, we have several data sets. It's worth running experiments on these data sets, checking if the empty hardness results are really empty hardness results. Because there are several papers showing that even if Theory people show that manipulation is empty hard for a certain voting group. Um, in real world settings, manipulation must be easy, easy to positive. So, what should you take home today? Um, you have seen how elections work. Uh, they have again frequent applications. Um, for elections with preferences, the voters need preferences, we need voting rules, there are many different voting rules. Most voting rules are susceptible to manipulative actions, to manipulation, control, bribery. Um, and the question was here, 
technical division of the SDP provide some kind of a shield against manipulated actions. The answer was partially yes, partially no. Uh, still, there is more research in this uh, direction. And the most important thing is natural restrictions. Either some kind of structures like single beaters or new single beaters are very important because these kind of structures appear uh, in your world settings. On the other hand, partial information is the part that I just skipped a minute ago. Um, because the natural assumption that the manipulators, the drivers, the chairs, and the driver control don't have full information. They have some kind of information. Maybe the top candidates uh, in each vote, maybe some kind of uh, comparison between a few candidates, on, and so on. Um, they have some kind of partial information, but they don't have full information. How does the complexity of our problem change in case we have partial information? I still have to go back to the slide that I skipped a minute ago. Um, we have checked the literature, and there are some papers of partial information, but they are all using different notions of partial information, different structures. And we have been, uh, investigated them, we have identified them, and we have introduced a few new structures. And it turns out that you can build something like this. These are all several um, structures of partial information, and it says which partial information model is a subset of the other one. Maybe there is some kind of connection between all these partial information models people are using in their papers. And um, our point was here, this was a paper in this year's AMAS uh, conference. Our point was here, guys, look at all the different structures. Everyone uses something else. Maybe there are some kind of connections. You can uh, come up with nice results. So thank you very much. Here's a list of basic literature. Uh, you can uh, look at I'm not aware of any other papers, any other 
Thank you.